Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take you through the pages of the National Dailies. As always, we will start off looking at the top stories on uh, the front pages of the dailies. I will start off with the Daily Trustees this morning. It's been made available by our paper vendor. And on the Daily Trust newspaper, 2023 moves to draft a methylene Thickens, that's the CBN governor. Uh, you have some quotas saying he's managed the economy properly uh, and it's okay, he, he's, you know, fit to manage the nation. Buhari's men pushing CBN governor. He won't go anywhere, that's a rider. Uh, another rider says, group begins nationwide mobilization. Don't distract him, Apex Bank is quoted on that. Uh, these are the riders underneath the board caption. And away from that, you have APC convention, Sale of farms begin amid zoning controversy. Uh, that's what you also find. And private sector alliance raises 100 billion naira to fight insecurity. Federal government says Nigeria's social security system poor. Six ILO's intervention. And just before we move away from the daily trust newspaper this morning, you also have property market thrives in Maidogri as residents decry rent hike. Housewife found slaughtered in Kanu. And rep summon NMPC GMD over 1.93 billion naira uh, chartered contracts. Ask you to decide on strike today. It just reminds me of the conversation I mean, we were having. We thought the strike was going to happen. A decision would have probably would have been made yesterday. But that's it uh, on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Let's move straight over to the Punch newspaper with these headlines. Fuel sales for 400 naira per litre in Abuja. Others, scarcity persists in Lagos. And the following writers, marketers still struggling to return adulterated petrol to NNPC. Corporations plead, corporation pleads for patience, says fuel queues will end soon. At the top of the front page of the Punch newspaper, the following headlines, TCN gets transformers to increase power transmission by 1,487 megawatts. Nupeng set for strike insists ministry diverting 621 billion naira road fund. Nupeng set for strike insists ministry diverting 621 billion naira road fund. That's a, a warring headline. Banks forex ban uh, dollar scarcity inflation firms closure imminent or firms closure imminent experts warn. Banks forex ban dollar scarcity inflation firms closure imminent experts won. And a final few stories from the Punch newspaper, NDLEA seizes 25 kg US, UK, Dubai bound drugs in spare parts fabrics. AKT teenagers land in prison over alleged attempts to kill sex worker. Olubado, we await Day's verdict today, says Balugun. Ondo Cocoa Factory plans $1 million pilot export to boost foreign reserves. That's a, a good story there. Agbekoya uh, threatens to confront aggression against Igboho. And Defto hits five in Yaba building collapse. Details on page 30 of the newspaper. All right, away from the punch newspaper, let's quickly look at the leadership and on the leadership. Car COVID raises 100 billion naira to combat insecurity. APC, PDP split, FCT council chairmanship seat. And that's what you find and boldly written. Convention APC in dilemma over governor's plot to impose chairman. And uh, the writer says, governor settled for Sani Musa as national chairman. We will resist any attempt to hijack party youth firm tells governors. And party stakeholders write President Mohamed Buhari and urges President to single-handedly pick party chairman. You remember the conversation we had uh, just last week as regards uh, the mode of picking, uh, you know, the chairmanship, and then we had there was going to be a fair uh, field for everyone uh, to contest. No end to fuel scarcity as Nupeng mobilizes for nationwide strike and troops. Police kill scores of bandits, rescued 20 kidnapped victims in Niger. And you also have Northern Governors Mon Dambaba, that toll in Lagos collapsed building rises to five. Delta short schools over death of 
19 months pupil. And this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. Let's go over to the nation a newspaper, the lead headline there. And SARS, federal government renews battle with Twitter. And SARS, federal government renews battle with Twitter. Microblogging agency accused of double standards in Canada's truckers protest. Um, interesting that the nation goes with that uh, headline. Uh, it was a, a, a big conversation online yesterday uh, on Twitter with Nigerians reacting to a statement released by the uh, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed um, through the ministry's page on Facebook and Twitter. More headlines from the nation. CBN forecloses forex rebate for raw produce exporters. CBN forecloses forex rebate for raw produce exporters. Senators reps uh, protest proposed exclusion from APC convention. Olubado to be Balogun picks name. House wears new look. PDP, APC, share FCT councils equally. Uh, PDP, share, are you excited? Though some papers uh, were having the narrative that the PDP uh, thrashed the APC in that, uh, in that council uh, poll. But anyway, let's move on. AGF to CCT chair, Dan Laddie, submit yourself for probe. AGF to CCT chair, Dan Laddie, submit yourself for probe. It's been uh, an interesting um, episode or drama, if you want to call it, with this particular man. Tinubu meets with monarchs in Ogun State. Um, there's a lot been going around as far as um, uh, the presidential aspirant, Bola Metinubu, is concerned, and his meetings uh, with uh, uh, those he's been meeting with. But let's leave that for uh, another time. Senator Six Reconciliation in Osho APC. AKT 2022, I'm yet to join APGA, says Oni. Or Oni, rather. And death toll in collapsed Lagos building rises to five. Quite unfortunate situation there. Asu keeps students' government in suspense. Yesterday, um, the students were having a field day on Twitter, um, reminding us that it was past 5 p.m. and they were yet to be told whether there would be a strike or not. Indian held over 134,700 bottles of codeine. Those are stories coming on the front page of the nation. All right, let's have Oponabon Katare join the conversation uh, this morning. Good morning, Oponabon Katare. If you can hear us, it's good to have you join us. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Popi. All right, uh, looking sharp, Oponabon Katare, and I, was, uh, I, I would like to wish that. you a happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Yes, happy Valentine's Day. Well, you know, this is my style. I, oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, you Definitely. All right. Um, l l let's start with um, the, the situation uh, as far as um, uh, the Nigerian government is concerned yesterday. And this is coming on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Uh, yesterday, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, um, took the opportunity of the Canadian truckers' protest um, to... Uh, to put a statement out, some will call it um, making political gain or capital from that statement, that uh, incident and the protest, drawing a comparison or making a comparison between what's happening in Canada and what's happening or what happened in Nigeria during the NSAS protest. Um, also looking at the actions of Twitter regarding the protest and the actions of uh, the online, basically, uh, companies banning some of the funding sites of blocking the funding sites that were set up to raise money for this protest. Your thoughts on this? Yes, I cannot uh, comprehend the necessity for such comparison. You know, and we are fond of um, sketching issues, especially when those issues are not as equal to us. You are talking of Nigeria, you are talking of Canada, we are talking of... I mean, what Nigerians are saying is that the federal government is trying to guard the press. What Nigerians are saying that the federal government is trying to be draconian. It is dredging up in another form, in this guy's decree for two and four, when Buhari was a dictator in 1984. I don't know how old you were then, Kofi, 
But, <laughs> let, 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 let's not go into that. <laughs> I don't worry, Kofi. Don't worry. I don't worry. I won't tell the world. I won't tell no the problem. world about <laughs> No problem. No problem. I won't tell the world about Messi. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but your patience betray you anyway. So, <laughs> so but some of us were in secondary school about finishing us at that time. So we are quite ease of the consequences of that decree. And, and the effect it had on Nigerians. And that is why Nigerians remonstrated when the federal government talked of guarding the, press, the, uh, the Twitter. If you remember, before the Twitter issue, the issue of the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation trying to uh, also guard the, 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 the media, especially the electronic media, was also a, a burning issue. It was, in, it was in the news. They came up with all kinds of guidelines and so on in order to strangulate the electronic media, especially channels and AIT. And so Nigerians are saying, no, we are going to reject this issue of gagging the press. Now, they use the issue of bringing down the tweet of Mr. President as an excuse. That was just a special reason. And we said the same thing happened to, um, what is his name, the former president of the United States. Donald uh, who Trump. Who just left? Trump. Donald Trump. Yes, Donald Trump. And the American government did not react that way. So why are they now making reference to Canada? It makes no sense. There is no preview whatsoever. It makes no sense about... Like Mohammed, unfortunately, I said this before, like Mohammed has exhausted his usefulness and is only trying to continuously ingratiate himself with Mr. President. But he has forgotten that he will be out of office. Maximum one year from now, he will be out of office. And whatever he does in office will definitely haunt him for the rest of his life, not just him and even in his generations on board. Because whenever his kids come out, his son is a member of the House of Assembly in Lagos. So when people come to say, I am so, my mama's son or grandson, it will immediately awaken reminiscence of his sordid and draconian activities and actions while in government. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that should even be an issue. We should concern ourselves with whether the federal government will continue to uh, guard the press, and if the federal government insists on guarding the press, or if the federal government insists on terminating freedom of expression, as enshrined in our constitution, then Nigerians will react. I'm not interested in whether the comparison or no comparison. And now they are talking of Canada. Tomorrow, when they talk of Canada, they will tell you, oh, this is a sovereign nation. Why do you make reference to Canada? It's a sovereign nation. This same government has said the, the, the uh, United, sorry, the international community should not interfere in our policies. The same government that is making reference to Canada is the same government that is saying United uh, the international government should not interfere in our because we are a sovereign nation. So I mean, this is this, it's a government with live dripping with words of nullifications and, and, and interposition. So I'm not interested in whatever line Mohammed is saying. The comparison is completely unnecessary, nugatory, and makes no sense whatsoever. So open about Qataria, what do you now make of uh, the fact that syrup is? suing the federal government and asking that whatever agreement that they entered with Twitter International should be made public. Because, uh, you know, Sarah feels very skeptical about uh, whatever agreement that should not, use as a, should not be used as a pretext in order not to allow the people to express themselves because this agreement has not been made public. Yes, that is a valid part. That is, that is one valid point. I mean, you're, 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 you must make the agreement because... Yes, we agree. The federal government is supposed to be the intermediary. And of course, we've given them the power, so to speak. When I mean federal government, we are talking of the judiciary, we are talking of the executive, we are talking of the legislature. A lot of people think when they say federal government, you are talking of just the executive and because of the overbearing influence. Nevertheless, it should be made public. So that Nigerians are also going to scrutinize what these agreements are. Now, you reach an agreement with Twitter. You must have even forced them under duress to agree on one or two things. But again, one or two things that are vast to national interest. Now, uh, public interest, rather. Now, but again, I believe that Twitter has lawyers, seasoned lawyers, that will also take into consideration the uh, protection and advantage of Twitter, the organization itself. 
But then it is meant for Nigerians. So Nigerians must know what the terms of agreement are. And we can also disagree with some of these terms of agreement. We can also disagree. It is not all about the federal government alone. And these persons forget that they will be out of office. And when they are out of office, they will be victims of the very draconian laws that are trying to put in place. That is the truth about it. But I completely agree with Sarah that the terms, the content of the agreement should be made public and subjected to public scrutiny. Because it has to do with everybody. Not just Mr. President. How can you bring down, how can you uh, uh, ban Twitter because they brought down the tweet of Mr. President? And the tweet of Mr. President that was brought down was highly inflammatory. It was, it was capable of dividing the nation further. Because it talked about a drop. This is referring to the internet has got a drop in an ocean. And all kinds of uh, uh, things that could, could lead to, to, to stimulate chaos in the country. It was highly inflammatory. How can you allow that to continue? How would you allow that to go? All right. Uh, uh, and concern. now you talk of hate speech. Okay. You also talk, the same government is talking of hate speech. But the government is the purveyor of hate speech. Mr. Kuchari, let, let, let's move on. Let's move on to, to the next one that I'm sure also will tug at the, uh, the strings of your heart because um, uh, any parent and any you know, uh, adult in Nigeria wants their ch children to have a smooth ed educational process till they're done. Um, on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, this headline, Strike, Anxiety as Asu Takes Decision Today. Um, that same paper talking about the Vanguard newspaper has uh, put out a breaking news um, that ASU has taken its decision and they are to go on a one-month warning strike. So um, that headline from the Vanguard has an update, a breaking news, that after serious deliberations that dragged into the early hours of Monday, uh, the National Executive Council of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has voted uh, to embark on a one-month warning strike to press home its demands from the government. A source at a meeting held in Lagos told the Vanguard newspaper, in confidence, they say that the strike is to allow the federal government uh, to do the needful failure to, of which the union would um, have no choice than to go on an indefinite strike. I don't need to say any further, but I want your response to this. Justification of the strike or the circumstances? Um, right now, they've taken a decision to embark on a one month warning strike. So that's the, the breaking news we have. Which I completely agree with. Because you're dealing with the government with a schizophrenic personality on education and practically on everything. <laughs> you know, this is a government that you can never trust. Speak from both sides of the mouth. Whenever you go into an agreement with the government, they renege. How many times have also gone on strike? How many times have they met, reached accommodation with the federal government? And on every occasion, the federal government reneged. This is a government that steals billions of naira every day. Every day, stealing billions of naira. Look at the fuel. The bad fuel that has been imported. Now, immediately, first they told us, oh, uh, NFC is important, exporting and importing. Now, they are telling us, oh, it was uh, uh, how is it subcontracted or whatever to persons. They started mentioning that it's a government that you can never trust. As you reach an agreement with this government, whatever it is, a memorandum of understanding was reached. Also a memorandum of action. Why is the federal government finding it difficult to implement? Whenever the ASU wants to go on strike, the next thing they will call for a meeting, which is a delay tactic. It's a Fabian policy. That is what the federal government is employing, the Fabian policy. They invite you, promise you, tell you to call up the strike, you call up the strike, and after that, they renege. They come up with one excuse or the other. Why is it difficult for the federal government to fund the education sector? Why? All you need to do is cut down on your expenses, frivolous expenses. That's all you need to do. But they will not because their kids are outside the country. They have what it takes. And my dear, I know what I went through to stay for my daughter to study law. Thank God she's done. 
It costs a whole lot. It costs a fortune. Here, they tell you law is five years. Or outside, three, two, three, four years. We are just planning the morass of procedure. Who has that system? Meanwhile, you go into study law for five years, which is very unnecessary. You end up spending eight years. So, what the sense? It's better you send your child out four years, four years and stuff. You make the sacrifice. Do, do, do because you, you don't even know whether yeah. that child will graduate no, in this country. Do you, you think, don't know. Do you think um, this, this might signal the... Um, probably the, the decline or the almost the, the end of public education, at least at a tertiary level, as you know. It has nothing to. It is not just the end of public education. We are talking of education as a whole. For example, I believe you are referring to the public schools. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what you mean. Especially yeah. at the tertiary okay. level. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, at the tertiary level. Now, of course, the primary schools don't go on strike. Secondary schools don't go on strike. We are talking of the tertiary level. Now, but the truth about it is that. Okay, now let us say Abwa. I think that's what it's called, uh, Abwa. This is uh, Babalola's university or something. Now, if you have um, uh, maybe five private schools and you have 100 government schools, yes, how many persons can afford the school fees? If you go to this uh, Dez University, it's about 4 million naira. How many Nigerians can afford 4 million naira? You start your year one there. Maybe in five years you're done. You, the, your colleague in a, in a, in a, uh, a public school will graduate three years after you. Therefore, those studying law, are you sure that when you finish from Agua, because at times too, these private schools ensure that the public, these public schools ensure that the private schools also embark on sympathy strike. So are you sure that when Abwa, if there is no strike, I'm using that as an example, in Abwa, there is no strike, one year, two years, you think the lecturers in the private public school will allow that to continue? That is, that will not happen. Well, wh wh that is one. No, yeah. no, no, wait, that is one. Number two, no, because it will be disadvantageous. Number two, it could lead to students' protests and unrest in the society. If you are just looking at a, a microscopic view, taking a microscopic view at it, we are not giving it a panoramic view. It could lead, because when I you know how bad I felt when my school went on strike, and my colleagues, my mates in other schools, did not, because it was that school that went on strike. The teachers, you are an internal problem. My colleagues in other schools graduated a few months before me, about six months. I know how bad. And I know we wanted to stay the strike in protest. We were to go back on the protest before the university called us the, 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 the strike and address it. So we are just not looking at a microscopic view. Let's take a holistic approach. Uh, 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 is, 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 is this holistic approach? And number three. Okay. Number three. All right. The or uh, finally, so that you talk. <laughs> Sorry. Finally, yes. The public schools, the effect is going to have on public schools. The public schools will be condemned for just those who cannot afford what it takes to go to these private schools, including the lecturers will resign and look for greener pastures in the private. So the quality will drop. All right, and talk, that is why we also have yeah. half big students. T talking about the, the, the quality dropping in, in the public tertiary institutions, um, some some you know people have said even the private companies these days prefer to um, employ the students school. who have gone to private universities. Um, is it is it about time the federal government looking at the difficulties that they have faced in 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 education? We've had these strikes ongoing for years now, from the military era right to the democrat, democratic republic we have currently. Um, and it's defied the parties. In the time of the PDP, we had uh, ASU going on a strike, and the APC has come on board. ASU is going on a strike. Um, um, is it about time um, the, the federal government tells itself what may, may be the truth, may, may be the truth, and say, we can't do it? Uh, state governments take over the schools, the universities that we have in, in your domain.
And, and just to add up to that, uh, I know we okay. have been talking about, you know, the effect of having the strike. But let's also look at some concerns that some people have raised. I mean, some people are saying that the leadership of ASU over time have compromised. And that's why over time you find out that these strikes are being called of two days after they threaten. They say we'll go for strike forever. They already understand the dynamics that the government will not live up to the expectation. I mean, this has been going on for a very long time. And the big question always would be, why do you engage when you know that the government will not agree? So what is, what is the thing? That question keeps popping up what is the thing that the government says to ASU that makes them call off the strike and then you know they have to come back two weeks after uh, they're embarking on that now some people have mentioned categorically saying that the leadership of ASU over time have compromised and that's why this strikes and all of this continue for a long time but I'd like to share your thoughts on on that yes yes um Kofi you remind me when I'm done with with uh question, I, I think that's what I um, that ASU, Labour, NLC, and all these other unions uh, all compromise is not in doubt. Because, and that is why the federal government is treating the body with levy. They know that they will only back and not bite. If you're embarking on a strike and you know that the reason for which you embarked on that strike has not uh, the aim has not been achieved, why call up the strike? Meanwhile, this has been the paradigm of the government. You call up the strike, they renege. Six months after you go, even if you take four years and back on that strike for four years, as painful as it is. You know, there are times you destroy a system to save that system. As painful as it is, you know that at the end of that strike, you have achieved at least 90% of what precipitated that strike. A situation where you embark on the strike, they invite you to a round table, and the night they give you a brown envelope. If they don't give you a brown envelope, you get a last. Because that is the truth about it. There is no other justification for calling up a strike when you have not reached or the reason for which you embark on that strike has not been addressed. That's it. Then why are you calling up the strike? The other six months you embark on that strike, including NLC. So most times I believe that these strikes are used as threats to get money from the authorities. And unfortunately, only a few of them, like a certain few, are the ones benefiting. Majority of them don't. Maybe the officials are the ones benefiting. And so when they are broke, they're back on the strike. When they are broke, most of them, I believe, their kids are not even schooling in this country. When they are broke, they're back on the strike. The issue, track one is. If they issue the track one, they expect invitation. If the invitation doesn't come, they're back on that strike. Otherwise, I ask you, Mercy. If I say I will not come to work unless my salary is paid, you now plead with me to say, no, come to work. By the end of this month, that salary will be paid. I come to work. At the end of that month, that salary is not paid. The next month, I say, I'm going. You say, no, come to work again. And then not paid. By the third time, if I come to work without my salary being paid, I am a fool or there is more to eat than is the eye. That's the truth about it. Your issues are not an address. Every day you call on strike, you embark on strike, you call on strike because they are compromised, they are corrupt. They are one of the same person. And the ministers are enjoying it because they use that as an excuse. It has become a security board, that sort of thing. Yes, let us sort that out. They will, they will call up the strike. <laughs> so the minister is enjoying The lecturers, the officials, the actual officials are enjoying it. That is what is happening. Otherwise, you call up, you go back on this strike, and don't call up this strike until the issues are addressed. But, 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 but some people will still say, but, but some people will still say that this is still in the realm of speculation. Uh, I mean, they know where everything is. You know, like I keep saying, like I keep saying, meaning, I believe you all did must study mass come from us. Meaning is not in the message, but in the message user. So, in other words, everybody reserves a right to interpret the situation the way he sees it. And that is why in everything you're doing, you must not be ambiguous. 
just like they are calling for the agreement of the contest, the agreement between Twitter and federal government. Don't create room for ambiguity. Because once you create room for ambiguity, all kinds of interpretation will be moving into that. As far as we are concerned, they are corrupt. If they say they are not corrupt, the onus is on them to prove that they are not corrupt. How do you explain that? I just use salary as an example. If every day you say you're going on, you're not going to work, or they don't want you, they pay you. And next thing, they must, the end, they call you. Next thing, if you're a woman, they'll say because he's, he's having an affair with you. So if you're a man, they'll say, no, you don't understand what they do. You have an understanding with the man. That is the truth about it. <laughs> that is the truth. They are not more to eat and raise the eye. But then, why, what is the result? I'm backing on the strike and calling on that strike without but, achieving the game. It is ridiculous. Mr. Kunobo I mean, this particular issue, it, I, I know the illustration, you know, you're trying to put out the comparison, but I mean, w w that's not the case because there are a lot of, I mean, organizations where a lot of people work and they're not being paid and they constantly go to salary, I mean, go to the office and it's not that anything happens, but it could just be that. No, 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 listen, listen, listen to me. Listen, listen, you're getting it wrong. Let's okay. in perspective. Okay. Now, you are not paid, you're going to work. Maybe you're doing that because you're sympathizing with the organization. Maybe you're doing that because you know the financial situation. Maybe you're doing that because you are not depending on that. Maybe you're doing that because you are looking for another job. But what I'm saying is, Messi, you say, I will not go to work. The management invites you. It's a different scenario. Please with you. Promises by the end of the month. End of the month, you come. They say, oh, sorry. Next month. Next month. They say, oh, sorry. So, Unless you are also rudderless, unless unless you don't have any future, you will just get out of that place. If you if you continue to go, it's simply because you don't have any other alternative. That's the truth. If you have an alternative, fine. But then, because why you are doing that is because you are mounting pressure on the system or the organization to pay you, especially when you know, for example, that your end is group trust with your family, meanwhile your salary is not paid. You right. don't like that. Open up one uh, uh, But if your enemy, if your enemy is bankrupt or something, you might sympathize with him. All right. All right. Open up. Let, let's move That's on. Uh, let's move on to other stories. Okay. But yes. on final note, if you know that your strike will not achieve the aim, then don't go. Don't then back on it. Interesting. Interesting. It's as simple as that. Don't then back on it because you're also frustrating the students. So don't then back on it. So if you know that you are going to uh, uh, call out the strike without achieving your aim, don't run back on that strike. Because you're also frustrating the students. All right. So I apologize, Oponabo, for the interruption there because of the, um, the network lag. I, no, it's okay. I, I it's think okay. you, had, it's okay. you had landed uh, on, on, on your point. Um, but, but permit us to, to please move on to another one because of time. Um, the, the, the big issue, you know, when uh, the punch captures this as its lead story on the front page of, of, of the paper this morning, um, the fuel queues are still with us. Um, and the punch is telling us that uh, uh, the petrol is selling for 400 naira per liter in some filling stations in Abuja, the nation's <coughs> capital, uh, and other parts of uh, uh, parts of Lagos as well. 400 naira per liter is not what Nigerians were expecting to pay um, in 2022. They're also saying marketers are still struggling to return the adulterated uh, um, PMS to the NNPC. I don't know whether we can call it PMS because it doesn't uh, look premium anymore. Um, the NNPC they are saying is pleading for patience and saying that fewer queues will end soon. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this? That we're still at this point this week. This is seven days after the first queues popped up in Lagos and several days after they popped up in Abuja. Well, for that of news and um, uh, being alive to the responsibility, it's an issue. So the the papers will carry it and make it uh, on their headline. But the truth is, you will only be an investor to think that the federal government is not involved. The federal government is just trying to extricate itself because of the Ferrari is generated. You know? Otherwise, who imports? Who gave license to those that are important? Who is now paid? Who is now indemnifying? The same federal government. From this is this issue of we are going to pay back reward and so on, they are going to also make money. 
the federal government has failed to address the petroleum industry sector for obvious reasons, corruption. That is where they make their millions, their billions of dollars. And so there are all kinds of shenanigans. I listened to the minister for... They were going to atone financially for the energy, for the damage. How are you going to do that? It affected my car. How are you going to reach Oblavia and Kotaria to pay for it? How are you going to reach Kofi Battle to pay for it? How are you going to reach Messi to pay for it? They'll also select those and tell you they are paid. They'll vote money. They think fast how to steal, how to embezzle, how to defraud. They'll tell you, oh, we have paid our social amount. Kofi, you're not going to be part of it. You're not going to be a beneficiary. These people, initially they said they were the ones importing. They exported, they sent out, and they paid. They refined abroad, and they have... Until we had this issue, we never knew that they actually got orders to do this job for them. It was when we had this issue, this problem, that we had that, oh, no, it wasn't NFDC, it was MROS, it was this, it was that. So much secrecy. Well, but we say, we say, Kutari, yeah, we, we're also hearing from the front page of the Punch newspaper, we're hearing, we're seeing that, that uh, Nupeng, the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, uh, is set for a strike um, <laughs> in, this, in this period. Um, they're saying that this, <laughs> this, this road fund that was, was brought up, that's meant to go to those in the, in the petrol uh, you know, supply sector and the oil and gas industry, this road fund, uh, $621 billion now of it, has been diverted by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. They said they haven't seen the money. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> this is into another situation. But, but this has just bolstered what I said now. It just bolstered what I said. Nupeng is also going to go on strike because Nupeng was not part of the deal, the loot. I bet you. Nupeng of the Kokori is not Nupeng of today. Mm. Nupeng will go on strike and they'll be invited to a round table and they'll come up with one reason why they have to call up the strike or suspend the strike. Mark my words. They are part of the strike today because they are not going to be they are not invited. Probably the ministry forgot about Nupeng, getting Nupeng involved in the loot. The fruits of the, the, the crime. Nupeng never tested. When they give them part of it, they'll call up the strike or suspend the strike. They'll tell you they have reached a meeting, a conversation with the federal government, and so they have they have decided to suspend the strike. You look, if Nupeng is serious and has the interest of Nigeria as a part, let it them back on that strike. Because the federal government will we, never account we, for that. We have to let you I go. I challenge you, the federal government will never account for that. I now challenge you to them back on that strike. Let's well, see get to the end we have to it. let you yes. go at this point in time. Thank you so much. We're really out of time. Mercy, you're, Mercy, you're always <laughs> letting me go. You're always letting me go. Uh, we, we have to let you go. Right. Thank you so much. Today is Valentine's Day. Right. Valentine's Day. I thought you'd be softer on there. Uh, Oprah, Oprah <laughs> Thank I, you so I wish you a happy Valentine's Day. She hasn't. So happy Oprah Valentine's Day. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. But unfortunately, Justin is not there. Could you be careful? <laughs> I have to watch my back. <laughs> Thank you, you very much for your time. I've reported you already. <laughs> All right. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have a Thank wonderful so day. Much. Have a wonderful yeah. day. It's always Thank a delight, uh, you know, listening to him share his thoughts on some national issue, and that's the size of it. On Off the Press, we will step on the brakes now. Let's tell you what happened today in history. Well, of course, uh, we'll be back after this break, and um, we have uh, interesting conversations coming up. Uh, the the Yapa building collapse is one that has, you know, thrown a lot of people into mourning, and it's, uh, it's, uh, we, it's a here-we-go-again situation. Really sad, especially... The fact that you hear five people have died in the story of Damola, uh, the IT student whose body was brought out of rubble. Really, really sad. We didn't expect to have something like that. We'll talk about this when we come back on the breakfast. Stay with us.